Wow. Okay. Today I'm going to start talking about this topic: BGP hijacking, new ways to mass surveillance. Well, um, from the title, is you may not know what BGP or BGP hijacking is, but um, I want to tell you that um, BGP is the protocol that controls the internet core and if we are going to hijack this protocol, using this protocol, it's going to cause um, serious troubles for us all. So, um, before I start talking about the details, you should know about two things first. First is BGP, which stands for Border Gateway Protocol. It is the protocol for exchanging routing information between different routers, and it controls the flow of data packets. Okay, so um, it's a way for routers to communicate um, and mass surveillance. Um, it means okay. It means surveillance to a large group of people, like um, on a country scale. Um, for example, like the USA's Prism Project, and it harms the freedom of privacy. So, okay, the malicious modification of the flow of packing can lead to unexpected mass surveillance. What does that mean? Um, it means that if I'm going to modify the flow of packet, like um, if I'm redirecting all the traffic from one place to another and I inspect the content be in between, um, it can cause mass surveillance um, on a global scale because um, internet does not have um, the concept of uh, country borders. So, we, so um, let's start talk about the basics of the BGP protocol. In this network, we have um, three sub-networks, and we call them AS1, 2, and 3. Okay. Okay, can you see? Is it okay? Okay. So, oh yeah. okay. so um, an AS, which stands for Autonomous System, it stands for a boundary for a group of routers, and it's usually um, the number is usually assigned to large networks like ISPs and um, large enterprises. Okay, and and in the connection between ASs or in the connection of networks, gradually forms the internet. Um, BGP is the protocol for these large companies to exchange routing information. That is how they're going to reach each other. Well, yeah. How they're going to reach each other. Um, so how do they know um, how to reach each other? S with the BGP protocol, we start with a thing called round announcement, um, which is to tell others that you are here. Okay, so for example, AS1 tells AS2 and 3 that um, he's here, and um, they, the remaining router with the connection will acknowledge that. Yeah. So, so uh, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. AS2 and AS3 will know that AS1 is there and they will construct a path that um, helps them to figure out how to reach AS1. So in this example, it is known that... Ah, wait. Uh, oh. Okay, so... I'm sorry. Um, so um, AS1 has a connection to AS2 and 3. So AS2 and AS3 will know that they have direct connectivity to AS1. But as AS2 knows about they have connectivity to AS1, AS2 will also tell his remaining connection, which is um, in this case AS3, that you, they, they have another route to AS1. So in so they'll 
finally form a meshed network like in this one, a triangle. So, so um, subnets with a smaller size will be preferred more than the subnets of a larger size. This is mean that this means that if I'm going to cut the network, that AS1 owns which is 10.0.0.0 slash 8 into smaller segments, that smaller segments will be preferred by the router more than the bigger segment. This is because the smaller segment is more specific to the destination. So um, after they exchange the route with the smaller subnets, um, the remaining routers will take up the route of the smaller subnets. Yeah, we will take up the route for the um, smaller subnets than the route of the bigger subnets. This is how BGP hijacking is done. Ooh. Usually done. Um, BGP hijacking usually starts at taking a subnet of a victim's network and announce it through BGP to the internet and um, the remaining routers on the internet will start flow that redirecting traffic to um, us before reaching the original destination. And how BGP slash best path, this also affects our um, decision. So the router choose their best path to each other by considering the AS path length. That is the number of networks needs to cross before reaching the destination. So in this example, if AS1 goes to AS3, there are two paths, um, AS1 to AS3 or AS1 to AS3 by going through AS2. So in this case, the direct connection it has a shorter path length, therefore um, the direct link will be preferred more than the longer link. Okay, there are several requirements for the path to be a best path, most of important of them is the path length which I demonstrated before and some other factors including routing preferences which is set manually and um, the multiple exit discriminator um, this one okay so uh, the multiple exit discriminator means if I have more than one connection to the same network at different locations it will choose the nearest exit so we will start talking about BGP hijacking now in this Figure, we have three networks, AS100, AS200, and AS300. And AS300 owns the network which is announced it through, yeah, which is announced it to AS100 and AS200. So, what if a hacker take control of AS100 through some means and change the BGP configuration of AS100? Let's see what happens. So, if a hacker wants to redirect traffic, so um, the hacker can divide uh, AS 300's network into half and announce the upper half, which originally should belong to AS 300. And AS 200 will now see the new route and starts to reroute traffic to um, AS 100 before reaching to AS 300. Because um, with the rules here, the smaller subnet will be preferred than the bigger subnet. So the route, the traffic will start to flow through AS100 before reaching the destination. And AS100 can now do anything with the traffic, like inspecting the traffic, copying the traffic, or even modifying the traffic. And like, um, I don't know, insert advertisement messages or um, to block your connections intentionally. It can do serious impact and you may not even realize. In real life, the hacker can be government agents because they can control the state ISPs. Um, data thieves, they love to, okay, they steal data through various means and BGB hijacking is very transparent to us. And uh, network engineers who misconfigure their routers, yes, network engineers sometimes misconfigure their routers to cause the effect of BGB hijacking, which, um, we may not be able to know which is which. It, hard, it is hard to distinguish between a misconfiguration and a hijack. So, but however, however, there is a limitation to BGP hijacking, which um, limits its range of effectiveness, because routers can actually reject new route announcements. 
and, and it's not always to able and it's not always able to hijack all possible traffic to a target because um, if you're going to cut okay go back to the example if we're going to cut the network into the into two halves and we only announce the first half we will only get half of the traffic that goes to AS300 and not every router will accept your routing announcement because the path may be too long for them and if something misconfigured there can lead to adverse effects to the internet and which I will show examples okay and there are actually new systems that are now capable of detecting these fraudulent fraudulent routes and um, inform the network engineers to disable them for example the dying internet intelligence is a service that monitors um, internet routes and monitors network engineers if something is going wrong so there here I'm show some examples okay the first example is the BGP hijacking of atomic weapon establishment of the UK so in this specific cases the Ukrainian ISP which is called Vega hijacked some IP space of the automatic atomic weapon establishment of UK which uh, is responsible for atomic weapons research and um, usage in the United Kingdom they and they hijack their network traffic before returning to its final destination from the photo okay from the graph in on the screen a, okay a test packet from Houston TX that is going to um, AWE is originally should be going directly which is the green path but after Vega hijack network it goes differently so, okay it now goes from Houston to Frankfurt which enters Vegas network in and goes to Kiev and then it returns to final destination at the UK Vega may be doing some data inspection in between and may even be stealing the data that AWE tries to communicate okay. the hijack network actually contains the mail server and VPN gateway of the research firm and serious and uh, and confidential emails can be leaked coincidentally the hijack IP space also contains and the mail service of Royal Mail which is a postage service company in UK not just the confidential emails of AWE some confidential emails of some other organizations may also be leaked and from this graph you actually see that um, Vega Telecom only takes up half of the space during the period of hijack this graph is a big example that shows that um, BGP hijacking is not always effective because you can see um, if if this graph represent the internet then it means that only 50% of the internet will go through Vega Telecom which uh, Vega can able to inspect the traffic or even do hijacking and the remaining half is unaffected so um, if talking about the feasibility it is not always successful the next example is VDOS hijack by BackConnect and um, BackConnect is an internet security firm which is dedicated to DDoS mitigation and um, recently uh, BackConnect used, BG, used the BGP hijacking techniques to hijack for dinner limit by announcing a subnet of its IPs apparently the IP spaces below contains um, the servers that VDOS used to launch DDoS attacks to others and BackConnect does not only uh, and BackConnect does not only hijack VDOS and it also hijacks some other innocent companies uh, which we don't have idea what BackConnect is doing usually DDoS mitigation providers, providers will also do BGB hijacking to redirect the attack traffic to the scrubbing centers 
that is to clean the DDoS traffic before returning to the destination. But in this case, uh, BackConnect does not fully take control of the take control of um, the path to Ferdinand limit, which will not be a successful DDoS mitigation. And so, and uh, and BackConnect. BGP hijacking duration is very short, so um, a DDoS mitigation is unlikely to happen. Uh, sorry. Okay. And BackConnect even tries to hide its hijacking attempts through a long AS path. Well, this behavior is suspicious even for internet security firm. And it is com uncommon for such companies to do th this, be this action and it may suggest they are actually mining data through this kind of hijacks. I don't think that BackConnect actually has um, anything useful for this hijack, so I think it may also be an experiment for them to see um, the power of the hijack. So the last one is that Aaron leaks its censorship to the world. So the Iranian state telecom announced a set of IPs which contains numerous pornographic websites. And originally, this route uh, stays inside Iran to block the pornographic website inside Iran. But unfortunately, the route leaked because of a misconfiguration. And um, the whole internet is not, is not able to reach these websites for about uh, two hours. And because it's chaos, Okay, so here's a list of IPs which uh, Ira the Iranian state government try is trying to block, but um, it leaks to the internet, so the whole internet is blocked too. Okay. Originally, um, they want to block them nationally, but however, the route gets out through Omentel, and Omentel redistributes this route through the world. So um, now the world acknowledges that the route to these IPs is originated from uh, Iron, and therefore a lot of traffic flows into Iron, and the websites are blocked in that country. So this shows the power of BGB hijacking because it's not limited to a country or a region. It can go outside and affect the whole world. And actually, I have another example of the Iranian state telecom that. Uh, leaks its censorship to the outside world too. In 2008, Ir Iranian state government tries to block YouTube because um, there is, is a YouTube video on, uh, yeah, there is a video on YouTube that harasses their president. But this route leaks to the internet and causes um, YouTube to go down for two hours. So um, there are, is no YouTube uh, throughout the world for two hours. And, well, it's not actually YouTube's fault, but the Iranian state government's fault. Um, this is, I remember at that time, uh, an ISP that uh, redistributes this route to the internet is flooded with telephone calls from, um, in, from a lot of international ISPs telling them to disable this route. Yeah. Um, it's also need, you also need to know that um, BGP hijacking is very transparent to us because um, it is operated at a backbone level. So um, it is not easy to discover. And there are actually, I don't think there are any ways to go over to, to prevent this happen. Aside from uh, the route, the um, die internet intelligence I, ex I mentioned earlier, um, but I think you can protect yourself through um, using encryption because if you encrypt your things and it transmits through the internet, uh, the hijacker will not be that easy to get your content. Um, and please note that the Great Firewall in China does not use BGP hijacking techniques. 
they are using different techniques than the one I mentioned here. So, do you have questions? Wow. Okay. Hello? Do you have questions? Ah. Um, hello. Um, so if end-to-end -end encryption, such as HTTPS, is implemented, uh, then how serious uh, will um, BGS, uh, BGP um, attacks be? Um, I, well, if you did your encryptions, then um, it's actually harder for the hacker to steal contents because they actually they actually monitoring raw packets. They are not actually monitoring your connections. Um, the data they get is very raw and needs a lot of processing before they can get any useful information. Um, so I think that uh, this can cause mass surveillance, but um, the effectiveness of this is can be questioned. So do you have any? Okay. According to my knowledge, uh, BGP is ISP routing service, right? Yes. yes. So, uh, uh, you mean he, uh, some her ISP can reroute it and decrypt it? Um, yes, they can reroute it and um, they... be able to get your information. But um, is it able to decrypt it? I'm, I don't really know because if you're using weak encryption, then they can surely can. But nowadays, most websites use strong encryptions, and it's um, a very hard job for them to do. So, what's the main target of this this kind of attack? Um, it is mainly well, it is mainly launched by uh, countries like Russia, and they try to get information on a large scale. And by using the mass information they gathered. They can find a way to okay. They can find a way to decrypt it, but that needs a lot of resources that only a country can support. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions? Okay. So, uh, about the last person's question, I want to talk, have some opinion. So. Okay. Is it this one? No, no, about the last person's question. So, oh. if if a country can reroute your all your packets to them on a massive scale, they can do metadata gathering or deep packet inspection to see if they to see what the network traffic is like, but they cannot pinpoint what is in every packet. However, if they want, they can do man the middle attack. Sure, they can do many. In, sure, so they can do many. They can do, attack. but not. But you don't know what they will do. So that's my opinion. Okay. So okay. So uh, I want to talk about this. Uh, man in the middle attack is possible, and deep packet inspection is also doable. But um, BGP attacks are also usually starts with a remote ISP. So there. So if your communication between one ISP and the another ISP is being hijacked by the third ISP. And then the third ISP can actually do deep packet trans, deep packet inspection as you speak. Any question? Mm. Wow. Okay. So I'm. I think I should end here. Thank you for your listening.